and welcome to this video where I'll be talking about creating and editing data in Curious. Or to be more specific, I'm going to do what is called backdrop digitization. So I'll be loading an image and I'll be using that as a backdrop for creating my data. This is going to be a practical lecture note. So most of the time will be spent in Curious, but first just an overview of what I'll be covering in this lecture note. So, um, First of all, I'll be talking about loading in a Google image as a XYZ file. So having that Google satellite aerial photograph backdrop image that I can use to draw on top of. Then I'm going to talk about in and out of edit mode, what it is and saving data, saving project data, whatever. Then I'm going to talk about punchlines and polygons, the types, how they differ in the interface. I'm going to talk about parts and rings. So basically, rings are holes, parts are, yeah. I've talked about Denmark is many different islands. So if we wanted one object for Denmark, it will be a multi polygon. So there are the parts, the individual islands. Then I'll be talking about modifying the data. I'll be talking about a function called snapping that helps me make sure that my data is connected. And then finally, I'll be talking shortly about working with the attribute data and only attribute data. So how to change that independent of the geometry. So that's what I'm going to cover. And uh, let's have a look how that is in QGIS. So first of all, we want to add our Google satellite data. So we'll go to our browser window and find this XYZ data. And here I'll right click and say new connection. And here I'll type Google. Google image. And then here and this URL, so universal resource locator, I'll paste in a HTTP connection that um, specifies a string with some strings X and Y and Z. That's why the name is there. But basically, that is how we access a Google image in QGIS. I will leave the, this string in the description, but you can also Google it and find lots of all of this type of XYZ data. So let's just drag that in. And we have the world. And I'll zoom in on Denmark. So. Um, and our university, which I just lost track of there. And um, so this is our university. Um, and uh, I'm going to create Danish data. So I want to change this coordinate reference system of my project to the Danish coordinate reference system that we typically use. In order to do that, I'll go down to this little globe, click on it, and choose this EGIS. This one, UTM 32. If it's not here, it's going to be a little of a hassle to find it. But if you type in 25832, it will also appear down here. This was this ESPG code of it. I'll just choose that shows me where it is, and I'll say OK. So now I've got that, and you saw the image just kind a wee bit, um, so that this is north, so that's north, south, east, west, as we know it. <laughs> um, then I have some data I want to populate, or some layers I want to populate. So in a earlier video, I talked about creating the taking the schema of your project and creating the structure in a geodatabase or in this case a geo package. So these are my layers. So I have a multi-line, a multi-point, and a multi-polygon layer that I want to use in this little project here. So I'll just drag them in. And O and layers 
I'll make sure that they are on top of my Google so I can see what I'm doing. So basically, I'm now ready to start digitizing or creating data. So I just start out with my line data. So it's select now, and I can go up to the pencil, and that will toggle edit mode. So that will take my line data and put it into edit mode. Once it's in edit mode, I can go and see some tools here. And this one here is called add new feature. So I'll choose that and I'll just create what is, I guess, the main path. So it goes up there and then goes along there and then to this building here. Once I'm finished drawing, I right click and so I call it path. So those are the attributes. I created all of these. I just created one attribute called name. This FID has an auto generate, so just leave that. It will just give them an ID as you go along. So um fine, that's done. I um can then click on that one. Run up off. Um Right click. So that's not much fun in doing that, really. Um, I can bring my points into edit mode, and I can bring my polygons into edit mode. What's um, worth noting is this icon up here. So if you know what it is now. Um, this one here, you see this is this blurby things, so polygons. If I choose my point layer, it becomes points. And if it my choose my line layer, it is a little line. So just be aware that that icon changes depending on the type of geometry that you're working in. So um, it, it, it doesn't always look the same. I have in this layer now, I've created some data into my line data here. So if I choose my line layer and then toggle, so go out of edit mode. Oh, that was not my line layer, my point. This one, it will ask me, do I want to save or do I want to discard or do I want to cancel? So if I press save, it will save this data. If I press discard, it or photo array, so if they ignore what I've changes I've made. If they cancel, it will stay in edit mode. I do that because I want to talk about this little save icon and this little save icon. So this little save icon saves the data that I've been creating. So I press this one, and if I now toggle my edit layer here, it won't ask me to save because there's no new data in it. It's important to understand that this save is not the same as this save. If I go and have edit mode and create a new path, let's say um, that. And press this save here. It will save my project, uh, blah. And um, that hasn't saved my data. If QGIS crashes now, that little path will not be there. So this save up here saves the project, the rich layers, how symbology, I talked about that in an earlier video. But this save is independent on it and saves data. So just be aware that there are two save buttons and this one with the little pencil on it saves your editing data. And this one saves your project. So you can basically press both if you want. And but when you are working with your editing, it's important now and then to press the data save. There's another way of bringing your in and out of toggle of edit mode, and that is you can right click on these layers and then you can toggle editing in there also. So instead of using the pencil, you can just right click whatever you 
find it's the easiest. I will um, create some polygons now. Let's start with this. Now, yeah, I'll start with this polygon. Um, so I will make sure it's in edit mode. It is this. I will check my new polygon and I will create the polygon down. And right click to finish. And this building is, I think is 08, 08. So that was a polygon, simple polygon. Um, some buildings are more complex. This building up here is a more complex. Um, we could do it in two ways. We could either create one polygon that matches all of it, or we could create a polygon consisting of one, two, three parts. I'll do the latter to show the use of the part tool. But before doing that, I'll have to say something about some other interface things, because there's lots of these digitalization editing tools that are not available in the default um, settings of what you see up here in your toolbars. So whenever you're going to do something a bit more advanced than just draw a polygon, you'll need to, or you'll probably do that once and then this remembers it, go to your view menu and down in toolbars. And what we want to do is we want we have two extra toolbars. We want this one that's called advanced digitization tool. That brings me the ability to put rings and parts. And then we also want to add another toolbar, which is called snapping toolbar. So this one allows me to make sure that when I draw things, that things touch. So I'll just, uh, uh, yeah, I got snapping there. So fine. Um, at the moment, snapping is off. Um, and we'll come back to that in a moment. But first of all, I want to make my main polygon. So I have my polygon layer. I choose my create and I'll just create this building here. And this building is called a one. I now want to add two objects to it. In order to do that, I make sure that this one is selected so it knows which ones to add it to. Just make it quite sure. So I use the selection tool, click on it. So now this one is selected. And now I'll go to my advanced digitization menu and find this little icon here, which is my add part. And basically I'll just add this part here. So now I have added my extra part. If I just save my data, what's interesting is that if I now click with my selection tool on this one, you can see this is one, this is an R. If I open my attribute table of this layer, it contains two rows. So one for this one and one for that. That's this row, that's this row. Now, what I want to do is that I want to add this, um, the, the, this little extra thing here. And I want to make sure that it connects to the other polygon. So I'm going to use this snapping thing. So I'll go to my magnet. Click on it so it activates. And then at the moment, I here have these two. So I've got three things that are really important. One is which layers. So just leave that as all layers. And also an active layer. That's all layers. That's active layer. And then this tool over here, where I can choose what I want to snap to. Um, as it isn't nothing selected, it will snap to everything. If I have turned this thing off, it will only snap 
two vertexes. What that means, so the vertexes are in its corners. This one is an edge. Let's leave it as vertex. I'll be using um, the segment in a moment, but just to show. So with this setting here where it is only on vertices, I will now go, this one is selected. I will now go and add a new part. And what you should note is that when you can see when I get close, oops, that was strange. Um, get rid of that one. So now it's so now nothing is selected. Now my vertices are selected, and now my everything is a bit strange, isn't this? Why isn't it doing? um maybe i went out of my editing tool so now it's in both tools that was what happened so i got confused there so now it snaps to everything turn off my segments and leave my vertices on and now create a new one you see it will snap only to the end here you see when i get close to a vertex i get this little red a uh, dot that says okay if i click where my crosshair is really the point will be added where the little red square is this one specifies how close i have to be so if i want in something ridiculously large i can um, i can be as close as this and then the point will be added of course that means that you might get something wrong so it's a question of finding something that is um, suitable for your purposes now i wanted to add it back to the segments so if i now create a one here you can see it now will snap to the segment good so i'll create my object And I'll leave that one alone for a moment. So that's not touching. I'll leave an arrow there by deliberately. And I'll then say right click finished. So now, never mind how close, I zoom in, these are exactly on that line. So that's a snapping tool. Before editing this little uh, or correcting this little mistake, I want to demonstrate another thing. So this was adding parts so all of these polygons were, were one part i will also demonstrate how to create a polygon with a hole in or add a ring so in this case it's um it's preferable that the layer is not displayed as a full color but transparent or hatched so let's use the style and change it to a hatch style and maybe change the outline to a red color. Okay, um, so now um, I'm ready to create this building here. So go into the add my polygon tool feature, create the outer. Area. And you have to do the outer first. Right. So this is building 02. And now I want to create this hole. So up in my advanced editing toolbar here, I'll go and choose my add ring. And then pick the inner ring of the polygon and right click to finish. And it will automatically cut a hole in that polygon you were over. So that's basically a way of adding a hole or ring. So in a add a part, you need to select the polygon you want or line you want to add a part to. If you want to add a ring, you just have to draw it on top of that polygon that you want to add the ring to. So that was basically adding parts and rings. Now let's return to my little 
uh, part over here because we had a wee bit of a problem with this data set here. So I want to correct this data set here so this point meets up here. So in order to do that, I'll choose this tool here, which is the Vertex Editor tool. So I click the Vertex Editor tool, and I'll when I hover over or mouse over my polygon or whatever I'm going to edit, all the vertexes light up. So you can see that this is indicating that that's the polygon or object I want to work with. And I'll move my mouse to over my vertex I want to edit. So now you can see there's a little there's a little circle around it in indicating that I'm not going to work for this vertex. I click the vertex, and if I move my mouse, you might be able to see that there's a little red line following it. So if I now go up to where it should go, there's a snap on there, and click there, it will move my vertex up to that point. In this case, I really need a new vertex to add this corner here. To add a new vertex, I hover over a line, so a line segment where I want to add a vertex to, so in this case here. I double click, which creates a vertex and also automatically sets it into vertex editing. So I can now click where I now want the vertex to be located. So here. Yeah. And now it has automatically moved the vertex to that point. If I um, add a vertex, oh sorry, double click, and then want to delete a vertex, you have, it's a bit of a trick, you have to drag across, so holding the mouse button down, drag across, so you get this little blue circle around your vertex, that means that this vertex is the now the one I'm going to do something to, and I can now press delete. Um, on the Mac, you have to be a wee bit careful, but it is a back space as far as I remember there. So that's um, the editing tool. So I can modify, I can create polygons. They can have parts, they can have rings, and I can use the vertex editor to move the individual vertex. You can also, it's not really very practical, but you can also move a whole line if you wish. Um, but to be honest, it's a very seldom what you want to do. Um, we um, only need one to cover one more topic in this video, namely how to edit the attribute data. So, because when you finish a geometry, a point line or polygon, then it will ask you for the attribute. But you can also go in to the I tool, so this in, and then click on an object, and it will show this standard um, identifier and its information. And then up here you have this little form edit. So if I click on that, it will bring me up the edit form, and I could change this to O zero. And say OK. So now I've changed this building to being called 00. zero. Um, another way of doing it would be to take my layer and show its attribute table. And here we have our three polygons. So O0, which is that one. O1. This one, which is 08, and this one, which is 02. In this case, I think this one is called 01. So I'll just go in there and I can then change it to 01. If you are working in the attribute table, it's a good idea to either press enter, or if you made a chain, then click in one of the other rows to make sure that the change has been submitted. That's basically um, the simple part of editing 
to creating new data, editing data. So hopefully I um, have talked about adding Google image to XYZ data. I've been in and out of edit mode, talked about toggling edit mode. I've shown the difference and the icons on the, depending on whether you are working with a polygon tool or a line tool, this icon has changes. Um, I've talked about parts and rings. So parts are, this could not necessarily connected elements while a ring is something that is inside. So parts are used to, for instance, Denmark, all of the islands in Denmark, while rings are used to making lakes. You can, of course, make a part inside a ring. So if you can have an object with a lake and then an island in that, then you can put a part inside a ring. We talked about modifying. So going into the vertex editor and change moving the vertexes. Um, we talked about snapping. So making sure that if you move or add a vertex, it snaps to a location on an existing object, so on a line, so a segment, or on another vertex. And then finally, I talked about editing the attributes alone, so using the form, which is in the identifier tool, to bring up the form-based editing, or right-clicking on the layer and bringing up the attribute table. So basically, that's all there is to creating and modifying data in QGIS. Hope you liked the video. Hope to see you in another one. Bye.